Hi there, uh, welcome to another segment of Heads Up for Hosers. I'm James, and today we're going to be going over the basics of a hydraulic system. The hydraulic system is made up of five basic components. The first being the reservoir. This contains the fluid used in the system, and most often being hydraulic fluid. Next we have the pump. This takes that hydraulic fluid from the reservoir and pressurizes it, sending it to the control valve. The control valve then controls the direction of the fluid, sending it either to the cylinder and extending it or sending it back to the reservoir. The cylinder then is the slave of the system. It extends or contracts depending on what side of the piston the pressure is applied to. And lastly, most importantly, is the plumbing. This is the system that Greg Distributors gets most involved in, and this is the components that are used to join the reservoir, pump, control valve, and cylinder all together so the hydraulic system operates properly. So now we can discuss how to correctly choose and assemble the pieces used in a hose assembly to plumb a hydraulic system. A useful tool to guide us in this decision-making process is the acronym STAMP. STAMP basically outlines the questions you need to ask before selecting and building a hose assembly. S of STAMP stands for size. First off, we need to know ID, which is the inside diameter of the hose. This is important to ensure volume and flow rates of the hydraulic assembly are proper. Next, you need to know OD, which is the outside diameter. This is important because you need to properly select the clamps for mounting and routing of that hose assembly. Hose length is also an important factor and this can determine the overall length of the hose assembly. The reason why this is important is because tolerances with the hose under pressure, the hose length will change. T stands for temperature. That is also the temperature of the material which is inside the hose, the minimum and maximum temperature outside environment that the hose assembly is exposed to, and or intermittent of constant temperature. A stands for application. This mostly is the environmental conditions in which the hose will be exposed to. It could be indoor applications that the hose is in, outdoor, abrasion risks. Is there flexing required of the hose? Therefore, you need to know bend radius, which will be covered later on in our segment. Movement of the hose. Is the hose static, which means it doesn't move very much at all? Is there vibration within the hose that you need to have considered? Or is there major flexing of the hose? M stands for material. This is the composition of the hose to ensure compatibility within the application. Therefore, we need to know is there solids going through the hose and what size and type they are. We also would need to know is it involved in a gaseous application. And if it is involved in a gaseous application, are those gases inert, which means they won't affect the hose, or are they volatile gases? And lastly on that, chemical application. Is there going to be chemicals that are going to be flowing through the hose? P stands for pressure. Pressure is important because we will need to know first and foremost what is the maximum working pressure of that hose. And also, will that hose under working pressure go from 500 psi to 5000 psi, which can be classified as surge pressure. Next is burst pressure, and that's important because we need to know when that hose is working under maximum working pressure, is it going to be at that maximum working pressure all the time? Therefore, burst pressure needs to be taken into consideration. An impulse application is very important to know. The reason being is, on the hydraulic assembly, is it going to be going from 500 psi to 5000 psi in very short cycle intervals constantly? The reason being for this is you get the flexing of the wires and if they constantly flex and you don't have the proper strength, they will break and the hose assembly will fail. Vacuum is also another important criteria to remember. And also suction. The reason being is not all hoses are rated for vacuum or suction applications. So therefore, if there is a vacuum or a suction applied to the hose, it could potentially collapse the tube and the hose assembly will fail. 
E stands for ends. This is the thread series of the hydraulic hoses. We will determine if we need a male end or a female end on the hose assembly. Do you want to have that hose assembly crimped or is it a reusable style? On those fittings, what is the material made up of? Is it brass, stainless, or carbon steel? Do you require those hose ends to swivel? Also, are they straight or are they angled? If they are angled, we would need to know the orientation of those fittings to properly determine how that hose assembly is going to fit. D is for delivery. This is quantity of each hose assembly and when are they required. Using Stamped will help even the most rookie hoser to properly select the right type of hose for the application. Thanks for watching this episode of Heads Up for Hosers. Tune in next time where we dig deep into thread identification.